Happy Saturday, everybody. I know you all aren't used to me saying happy Saturday because you normally see me on Thursdays. But as you all can see, I am joining you all this morning. I'm not by myself. I am with my sister in sports of the athletic, Miss Rhiannon Walker, amazing journalist that covers the Washington football team. She is joining us live from Richmond down in training camp. This is day four and the last day in Richmond. So good morning, Rhiannon. Good morning, Miss Candy. How are you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. Missing you guys in Richmond, but hey, this is a way for us to still connect. So I'm, I'm blessed for us to be able to connect virtually. Were you able to catch that? I'm sorry. I think yes, that may be a bit of a lag. Yes, ma'am. I heard, I heard you. I got you. Oh, okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I know you have a lot to do today. Of course, you got to get to practice and, and do all of those things. So we know it's still early in training camp season, but wanted to get your thoughts and initial reactions on the first few days of training camp. I think the thing that I've taken away from this the most is just some of the way that players have been used kind of, you know, you think you can kind of figure certain things out looking at them from the spring practices, but then seeing it actually in training camp has been very helpful. They put their first shells on yesterday. Um, one of the things I was really interested in was, you know, you have Benjamin St. Juice. He had a really good spring camp. Um, I talked to his former coaches and they said, you know, he's obviously a guy that you can put him on the outside. And, you know, if you do that, you have a guy in Kim Fuller who had some of his best success in Washington before he was traded. And even when he was at Kansas City in the slot. And so having that affirm, seeing that actually playing out on the field, that has been very cool. Landon Collins coming back and being on the active roster to start training camp. I, that was surprising for me because. The consensus has always been that when you have a torn Achilles, it takes about a year to recover. Now, his doctor said nine to 12 months. He came back in seven and a half. I thought that that was pretty cool for him, listening to him talk about the process it took for him to get back. Um, and it's really big for him to get back right now because, as we know, Cam Curl stepped up for him last year when he was injured and now has created a situation where you have this rookie that played so well that he certainly merits the attention and the opportunity to compete for the starting job. You have the second highest paid safety in the league in Landon Collins on the roster, your second highest paid player on your roster as well, too. And so you're sitting there like, OK, well, you you know, you got to find a way to get this guy on the field as well, too, in some way, shape, and form. And so they're letting the two of them compete. We've seen them kind of move around. Both of them have played the Buffalo Nickel, which is the big nickel in Death Del Rio's three, or 4 3 system. Um, they've also both played time at strong safety. Cam Curl has also slid over to the free safety spot. Basically, it's very clear that if there's a way that they can get these, both of these guys on the field, they're going to find a way to get these guys on the field. Um, Cornelius Lucas is not here. He would be competing with Samuel Cosme for the right tackle spot. We've seen the rookie take some lumps from the veterans in Chase Young and Montez Sweat and sort of seeing like, OK, so he still needs to adjust. Obviously, this is a very hard job that he's about to take on. But it's of the utmost it's of the utmost importance that this line hold up this season because they allowed the second most sacks last year. And so seeing the rookie take those beatings now as opposed to in the regular season when it's going to matter, we talked about that quite a bit. I just There's a lot of different competitions that are happening, and I think that that's probably been the most interesting thing is seeing how the coaches are giving guys opportunities to get out there, learn from their mistakes, um, who's making progress, who's retaining information, and who is showing different effort as that goes further. No, that's great information, Re. I actually was very interested in seeing, since you've been around a bit now, um, on the Washington football team um, and seeing the difference in the coaching staffs and overall front office leadership as well. Any information you can share around just the difference in culture, right? Like how in terms of practices and players and energy and just um, overall involvement of the front office staff, what's your, what's your overall feeling in just practices? Are they faster? Are they more energetic? Is everyone collaborating? You know, any feedback you can share there? Well, of course. I mean, we kind of saw that last year with training campus, that it's very business-like. There's no fun and games being played down here. And I mean, that's what Ron Rivera wants. Everyone knows that he comes from a military family background. His father was in the military. And so this is about being serious. This is about when you do certain things, it's about it's supposed to maximize the best output. So it's not doing things just to do them. It's doing things so that there's a net gain on the other side of it, a return on investment. And so you have less, I mean, there haven't, there was a few scuffles yesterday and Ron shut that down. I remember the last training camp that Jay Gruden had, he, um, there were three different fights before he had them run gasters. And I thought to myself, I've never really seen a coach where you have a fight maybe once or twice and you don't give an immediate punishment to get it to the third scuffle was kind of like, all right, that, that shouldn't have happened. 
Um, we're going to talk about that. He doesn't see the point of people fighting because in a real game, you fight, you put your teammate or you put somebody in a headlock. That's a 15 yard penalty. There's no advantage to doing that. Obviously, just don't get in the fight. You know, stand up for your teammates, stand up for yourself, but don't let somebody get in your head. And he said that Chase Young likes to talk. Don't let him get in your head. That's what he does. If you let him get in your head, then you've lost the rep. And that's a true fact. That's a true fact. That's what Patrick Beverly does in the NBA. That's a, like, you know what? Reggie Miller used to do that, too. You get people out of sorts when you get in their head and they're now they're not doing stuff. And shoot, you might be able to get them out the game with that kind of stuff as well, too. Um, so he has no interest in the shenanigans. I, I'll say that right now. It's very business like there's an entire script that they follow. They're very much on time. Things are very much day to day. They're very much the same. Um, yesterday was the first time that we saw one on one reps with the wide receivers and the cornerbacks, which is very cool. Jay used to have that happen every single practice. They started doing that. You know, just yesterday, we might see some one on ones with the offensive line, defensive line. But I mean, you certainly, as it relates to the front office, um, on the business side, the mayor of Richmond is saying this has been the first time in a long time where it hasn't been so adversarial with the team. And I think mm -hmm. that that's important because this is technically speaking the last year they're going to be in Richmond. Right now, the mayor is saying, I actually have some hope that maybe we can work out a longer term partnership beyond here. They didn't say anything definitive. It's just to say that what they were, who they were working with before they certainly they didn't have an interest in doing that. They were tired of some of the stuff that was going on with this new group, Jason Wright being the team president, Ron Burr being the head coach, and some of the other people they've worked with. Um, they feel like there's some optimism that, you know, moving forward, they can continue to have a relationship with the team, um, maybe bring them back, but that will all be sorted out a little bit later on down the line. No, that's awesome information, Reed. I'm seeing some comments coming in and, and folks are mentioning, you know, they're loving the culture shift. And even as fans from the fan perspective, they can sense it as well. So that's uh, as always, you know, spot on, very consistent with even the fan base's feelings. So that's awesome. I want to go back to the comments you were making earlier about the position battles. I know there's a lot of talk around the quarterback battle. You all have been reporting some great information, you specifically on um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Taylor Heineke, even, you know, some of what Kyle Allen is bringing when he's able to take reps. Any of your initial thoughts on the quarterback battle? I think that it's, man, it's clear that, you know, Kyle wants to make some noise and not in a bad way. It's just that, you know, he had a couple of really nice long passes. He's showing that, like, I still have the arm. The reason he's not in the middle, the midst of a quarterback competition. And it's, to be clear, it's very hard to have a three quarterback competition. There's just not enough reps in training camp for that to possibly happen. They're going to have to sort that out in preseason, really, once they start playing some other teams. But he's had some of the prettiest long balls I've seen the entire time in training camp. Taylor Heineke, he's pushed the ball down the field. Ryan Fitzpatrick has done it as well, too, with a great deal of accuracy. Um, and it's not just at the quarterback level. I mean, you see the veteran savvy that you get with Ryan Fitzpatrick. You see the gusto that you get with Taylor Heineken. You see Kyle Allen trying to force the issue, um, even though he's still working his way back to total strength with that ankle. He's participating, but just it could be stronger, obviously. Um, you see the wide receivers giving a lot of effort as well, too. I mean, we've seen Terry McLaurin getting behind different guys. You've seen some of the reserves, Tony Brown, Isaiah Wright, Kelvin Harmon, Antonio Gandy-Golden. You see a lot of those guys recognizing, hey, this is a very deep race, you know, helping the quarterback out, but also helping themselves out as well, too. And that's something that Ron Rivera has talked about is that they're very deep at wide receiver. Um, mm -hmm. Deami Brown, you've seen him stretch the field as well, too. Guys are putting their best foot forward. I think that's probably one of the other things with a Ron Rivera training camp is that you can see the hustle, the energy and how invested the players are and doing the right things. Um, I think with you know, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, one of the things we've seen consistently is that he and Adam Humphreys, they're like peas in a pod. They're like this. The Ouch. chemistry is so clear and apparent because they played two seasons together. Um, and he's working his way up to that familiarity with the other guys. He talked about that. This is what training camp is for. That's what preseason is for, is that I want to know what these guys want to do. I want to know why they want to do it and how they do certain things well so that I can put them in those positions to succeed. And you see that with Taylor Heineke as well, too. Yesterday, Cam Sims got injured. He walked right over. It was his rep that he got injured on. He walked right over mm -hmm. to him, talked to him after he tweaked his knee a little bit. He was okay, ultimately. But there's this general sense of concern and interest in helping their teammates out empathy and compassion towards one another that I think is very different from what we've seen in the past. It was something I noticed last year when the team was losing is that the guys didn't turn on themselves. And maybe it's possibly because we weren't in the locker room to have some of those conversations. But I, I kind of wonder even if that would have changed it. I just think that they realize, hey, we could be doing better than we are. We just aren't doing it right now. So we have to turn this ship around. So those are my biggest takeaways from the competition at quarterback, some of those differences, and then some of the other competitions down the line. 
No, I think that's awesome information. I know you are short on time and we're kind of like 10 minutes into this thing, but do want to get your overall opinion. Again, it's still early, but got to ask your opinion on which one of the battles are you looking forward to the most? Which one you think is like, okay, it, this is anybody's roster spot right here. Anybody's roster spot. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. There's a lot of intense ones. There's a lot of great ones going on. I know Ron Rivera had some feedback on the free safety and strong safety positions. I think probably free safety might be the one that I've talked about this one a lot too with Bobby McCain. Mm -hmm. I um I think that's one of interest to me. I mean, I think I think both the safety spots are really interesting to me because mm -hmm. I hear Lenny Khan saying I got back in seven and a half months, and I talked about this in my story. It, and the acknowledgement that there's pressure. I love when guys are honest. I think that, you know, we get a lot of canned quotes from guys. We get a lot of guys who are like, if I just give them anything, like they'll, they have to take it, it is what it is. But for instance, yesterday, Nikki Jabala from the Washington Post asked him about his comments to Ryan Clark, acknowledging that he feels pressure. And he goes in detail about the kind of pressure he feels and why he feels the pressure. And he says, yes, you know, like, you know, is it heavy that I have to carry this load? You know, knowing the stuff about the contract, knowing that he hasn't necessarily played up to it, knowing that there are fans who have kind of turned on him because of the fact that he is so highly paid and he hasn't, you know, had the output that you'd like to see there. I love the honestness and I like the genuineness of his answer because, again, you know, guys don't have to give us their honest thoughts about it, but he does acknowledge it. Or even explaining that. Yes, there's a competition between him and Cam Curl, but realistically speaking is that if Cam is going to start, the best thing he can do is help him prepare for that role. You can sit there and be a gatekeeper of knowledge if you want to be, but then when the team is suffering because you won't share that information, well, now everybody kind of looks bad, and that's unfortunate. And so it's one of those things where – and I talked to Cam Curl separately as well too, and he said, yes, this is a competition, but it's not a bloodbath, if that makes sense. He thinks a lot of people want to make it more than what it is, that we're competing, but at the end of the day – um, we're all on the same team. So I'm still learning from Landon Collins. I'm still learning from Bobby McCain. Um, I'm only a second year player. It's not like I know everything. It's just like, I just do what I do. And I hope I go out there and do it. It's like, you know, he believes he's going to do it well, but the acknowledgement that I can ask these guys for help and they're not holding that in, withholding that information from me simply because they see me as a threat. Again, this is all one team. You want everybody on this team to play well. This is something that I've noticed throughout the entire campus that these older guys um, and even Chase Young, like when he talked about Samuel Cosme, is that a lot of people are frustrated seeing that the right tackle you just, you know, invested a second round pick is getting beat up on so bad. He's getting beat up on by Chase Young and Montez Sweat. I, last time I checked, Chase Young is the defensive rookie of the year. He's a pro bowler in his first season. That's not a bad person to get yourself beat up by in training camp. And the thing I keep telling people is that you would much rather have this kind of stuff happen here in training camp where there are no consequences before he has to go out in a game. And next thing you know, you're starting right tackle because, you know, Chase Young is easing up on him so he doesn't look so bad. Montez Wood is easing up on him so he doesn't look so bad and they're not hurting his feelings. No, I think it's better that you hurt his feelings right now and iron sharpening iron um, and talking to Brandon Sheriff is like, OK, this is happening or talking to Chase Young and Montez Wood. Well, this is happening. How can I improve? How can I get better? We'll see what happens when Cornelius Lucas gets off the um, reserve COVID list. But these are the things I'm noticing is that there are a lot of really good teachers on this um, roster. And the selflessness is probably the biggest thing that stands out to me from this group. Rhiannon, much appreciated. That, I mean, I feel like, and I'm sure everyone that is commenting, they're like, wow, this is great information. You all, I'm sure, are following Rhiannon Walker on Twitter. If you are not, you absolutely need to be. Because as you can see, she has all of the details. She's an amazing journalist and retains all of the information. We feel like we've all, we, we were all there, honestly. Seriously, as always. That's that's the whole point, Candy. As you know, like I try to I know that a lot of fans can't make it down here. I understand that people are very invested right. in this team. I try to do the best I can when I'm relaying stuff on Twitter. Um, so people get the full picture. It's very easy to say, like, oh, he threw this pass to this person. Okay, well, was it a seam route? Was it a go route? Like, you know, what are these guys doing? So for those mm -hmm. people who follow or, you know, if you're on the fence about it, I certainly try to take people as much as I possibly can into training camp because I know a lot of people can't make it out there. So that's the fun in all of this. And, you know, you guys get some jokes from me, too, as well. A lot of jokes <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I saw that Nikki even tweeted the whole <laughs> week. Y'all down there. I was like, Rhea's is down there partying to that music. I, that's my girl. <laughs> and, you know, I miss I miss you being out here. I miss Kareem being out here. You're going to play. I know. You're going to play Wipe Me Down. I, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to wipe myself down. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I should be <laughs>
<laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, Reed, thank you so much as always. We're definitely going to circle back with you toward the end of training camp. We know that it's still about a month or so left. But we feel like we are absolutely up to date after this conversation for certain. Thank you so very much. And I just, again, I always got to shout my people out. You know, I only like to associate myself with the best in the business. Rhiannon and told me she had five minutes. She was like, listen, girl, I got five minutes. Let's make it happen. And we've been on here for 15. I appreciate it. Kenny, you know you've been looking out for me. That's not a problem. You see, you don't see me over here checking time or anything like that. So it's. it's I know. That's why I'm like, I'm checking the time. Like, wait, she's only got five minutes. And we've been here for 15. So appreciate you. This was amazing. Awesome. Again, everybody, make sure you are following and keeping up with Rhiannon on Twitter. I will see you all earlier next week with another update on training camp. Until then, you all enjoy your Saturday. And Rhiannon, thank you again. You're very welcome, Candy. Thank you for having me on.